that on. There we go. We are back for another exciting episode of Warcraft Fangs of the Moon. I hope you guys are ready for at least some crazy oddities for tonight. Uh, I've managed to put together at least uh, three insane uh, people to come along with me. So um, hopefully their sanity matches my own. <laughs> That's bad. Y'all don't need to match my sanity. Please don't. <laughs> don't worry, I was I'm not gonna try. <laughs> Please don't. It's not good. It's not. It's not healthy. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get started. Warcraft: Things of the Moon episode. Why is that only a one? That should be an eighteen, not a one. Good night. Did it decide? We're back to episode one, guys. Sweet. Eight. Okay, there we go. Warcraft, Fangs of the Moon, episode 18. Small steps and why it did that, I have no clue. Okay. <coughs> I'll just turn to my notes and read from there. Uh, after following, or small steps, after following the, a scent trail into the sewers, our group found a number of cultists gathered there for an unknown reason. The group managed to stealthily approach a large communication crystal, crystal that had been uh, that had a couple of uh, cultists around it. Quickly dispatching the guards and having a minor dialogue, or rather, uh, letting the unseen entity monologue for a bit, uh, our par party managed to leave the sewers a bit aromatic, a bit more aromatic than what uh, than when they went down, and plans for rest and relaxation lay before them. As the event, as the evening unfolds. All right. Let's see here. Let's start off with okay, Audric. You are heading to the take other a bath. bath. Yep, you are heading to take a bath. Anything else you were gonna do there? What about I don't hear? Not that I wrote down in my notes. <laughs> what about what? I don't hear any music. You don't. I hear music. We we do have music. It's still on my uh, splash screen, so I may not be able to see half the table, but I can hear the music. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, we'll be changing. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't really remember. I mean, I'm assuming we hadn't actually made a plan for what we were going to do the next day, or. We yeah, don't have any large scale plans yet, so I guess I'm just going to go take a bath. No. My other yeah. plan that I have, that secret, will remain secret until later times. <laughs> okay, so you head off to the inn, uh, the moonlit view, to take a bath. Uh, seems there's a little bit of a discussion going on with some of the uh, some of the folk who are just wandering about. Nothing too major. Uh, you get to the inn, it seems to be nice and peaceful. Uh, request your bath, and Constance hops right to it because you seem to be her favorite. And uh, she gets you a nice warm bath uh, already, nice and scented as well. So, And Zariana disconnected. Great. <laughs> I, can't, I can't hear her, I'm just trying to like fix it. Okay. Uh, while you're trying to fix that... Uh, Kylar, you wanted to go clean your armor, and uh, I'm guessing that's about it. Just clean your armor, clean clean your weapon and such. I was gonna get food. Okay. For my tavern, which was included with my stuff, I wanted I want I want food. Food is good. Okay. Okay. As you enter into the and then uh, and then I was gonna find some way, probably not talking to Lady Prestor directly, but finding like her messenger because she's busy now, but like just letting her know that like. I'm gonna take the take the sheriffy job. Okay. Okay. If she still wants me to do that with everything else that just happened. Okay. You're gonna hunt down dragon eggs. <laughs> uh. Okay. Okay. A. If I ever happen and we get ten thousand gold for getting a dragon egg, you will thank me. And B. Or will I, to, I? I get to be a sheriff. I get to be a sheriff, which means I get like. I get to boss police people around and like make arrests and do stuff. So, do you want to be able to arrest annoying people? I think the answer is yes. Mm. <laughs> it could come in handy. Anyways, yes. as you make your way to the last drop, 
they have, uh, they're starting to uh, art have already started prepping for uh, their early evening or early dinner hour and are um, getting things set up uh, it's a little quiet um, there is uh, two dwarves sitting uh, sitting at a table one has or, uh, you recognize quite easily as one of the uh, dwarves from the couple uh, from the previous day who uh, made the mess and got in trouble and is still trying to clean and work off his debt. And he seems to be talking with another new dwarf who has a, a medium-ish shoulder length, uh, dark black hair, and a uh, medium-style goatee. Or not goatee, a uh, medium-style beard. Longer than Kairath's and definitely longer than yours kind of thing. Cool. Well, I'm still covered in junk, so I gotta go take it, like clean my armor and stuff. So, okay. At uh, this moment, I I'm just going upstairs, trying not to get too close to people because I smell bad. There's a bunch of dwarves here. They're not too concerned. They, uh, the one dwarf with the uh, the black hair looks up at you. About ready to go out for the evening tonight, aren't you? And the innkeeper gets a whiff of you as well and says, All right, laddie, uh, what kind of uh, cleaning materials would you like? Well, I really just need wa water, probably. We'll see if that does it. I don't know. It'll be fine. I'll just... Eh. Say, you haven't heard any like whisperings of like, like a... Like a witch coven or something like that lives in the sewers, have you? Like any whispers of anything weird going on? Uh, not for anything that, about them living in the sewers. There's been some weird talk about this twilight thing in my bob, but that's it. Not too much has been going on, in other words. Uh, a twilight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I forgot what. Um, I just heard some people talking. So is that like a thing that's like here? Or, like, somewhere else when it's coming here, like, because well, it's curious. Well, with uh, what's been going on is they've been having street preachers. A couple of them every now and then will go out and, well, preach and do whatever they do. And uh, then they go off and do their own thing. Uh, occasionally, we hear of, uh, every now and then, of somebody going to join them, but... Nothing much. They sound more like a doomsday cult. I sat and listened one time, and uh, dude kept ragging on about Twilight this, Twilight that, and that the light was coming to an end, which is, let's be frank, for the light to come to an end, that means this entire city would have to go under, and frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, we have we have King Minothel to take care of us, and then there's the whole glowy pillar thingy in the center with the, uh, with the cathedral. I don't think anybody could topple this city, lad. So, they just like... Left. That sounds like he's sending fate. I didn't think we should leave this city. <laughs> uh, you're not there. Gosh, you. So, like, you just... So, they're like, they just let these people just, like, talk and, like, recruit for, like, clearly, like, evil purpose. But that doesn't make it. Well, it's... Oh, Oh, it's one of those things of um, if people want to go off and join a place like uh, something like that, and they can do whatever they want. But uh, frankly, if they they've not done anything illegal yet, so we really don't know what uh, to do. Well, uh, if you're wondering why I need to clean my armor, it's because uh, we well, we were at the meeting went terribly. Not the meeting itself, but what happened at the meeting. Um, some bad stuff happened. That news will come later. Anyway, we tracked some bad people into the sewers. And there was this Twilight people. And I don't believe this. So like, in the sewers, they've got, like, these guard posts set up, right? And so, like, we're all sneaking in, like, trying to track these people down. Like, scare the daylights out. I want to actually capture her. She's actually a prisoner now. Anyway, uh, moving down. Here's some, like, this weird chanting. We come to this, like, area. And... 
there's a couple people there's like this guy talking like this giant crystal thing and then this crystal gets we defeat those people and then these like crystal gets like eyes and he resurrects one of them and then we have to fight that and then um so clearly whatever this crystal thing is not good whatsoever so he was like monologuing like he knew stuff about the people i was with so like he's super not good so clearly this is really bad the twilight people like can't tell the story right so we're out there like um so anyway um what's gonna happen is like you know you're just over there and like he was clearly stalling for time for reinforcements to show up and like kill us um but you know like evil shadow crystal dude one of my companions wanted to keep talking to him because like knew something about his sister or something i was like this is clearly a trap so we like we're booking it and we heard like this thumping sound behind us i think when our like there's like this giant like crazy crazy like flesh thing like abomination construction thing that was like just like a ball of flesh like that was like 10 feet tall it's living in the sewers and so they sent people down i think they, but they probably cleared out and they're around the run somewhere but who knows how deep it goes in the city but if you see like spread the, if you see those twilight people out in the streets they're oh, not good so they're not good all right lad i'll i'll make sure spread the word uh we'll see if we can get uh, a nice dwarven militia after them make sure they won't come to this part of the city right Uh, after anyway, yeah. So, so I just got to clean the sewer junk off, and you know, expose the major plot. Some I don't know what they were doing, but they were clearly helping somebody. Um, but that the the undead, they were clearly helping the undead because there was they they took one of the crystals that was uh, like the anti magic crystals that was at the summit, and uh, this death knight teleported in, threw a thing on the, on the ground. Turns out, Gilneas is fallen so that's great and i don't think keeping secrets is right so if anybody else wants to say they shouldn't have said that i don't care people need to know what happened okay uh he looks at you he's like gilneas is fallen all right i'll see if i can't get uh the wild hammers on the horn see if we can't get some uh aid to head on out there uh they'll be able to at least help good. out I'll see if I can get the, the, uh, some cleaning water up for you. Uh, see if we can get a nice shine back on that armor. That'd be great. And yeah, if you could look out for the Twilight people, get some people, send some, you know, aid at least, some medical aid over there. Probably need it. Although I don't know what condition the city's going to be in. There's probably going to be refugees coming in, hopefully, from somewhere. I'm not sure they'd but. make it here. Uh, we're kind of on the other side of the ocean here, uh, but... Uh, there are a couple of cities that could uh, they could hit to that would be uh, really good, and getting the word out to say the wild hammers would be a good way to make sure that uh, Stormwind is, is prepped and ready for any uh, any refugees. I'll make sure that um, that Silvermoon gets some word as well. They're the next closest one. Yeah, well, yeah. So today not a great day. Oh, we did learn some things. So I guess it wasn't a total waste of time. Well, there is that. Knowledge is power. <laughs> ah, that is, I think my grandmammy and mommy said that one time, but uh, I've, truth be told, I never listened to grandmammy. <laughs> oh well. I probably should have. Oh. I didn't hear anything. Well, and if we leave the city, just, you know, probably let some people, in the, like, officials know about and if you hear anything about the twilight eyes and ears everywhere in the city is better than only guards and whatnot oh for sure i'll make sure i'll make sure the uh, the guards know as well and we'll get everybody on board with this great nigga count on you anytime lad anytime let's see here let's go ahead and change all right i'm gonna go play my armor now okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, after and, a few and that is how I recruit everyone to do my bidding. <laughs> I recruit the bartender, <laughs> and he just tells everybody what I want. Also, um, you guys know I have prestidigitation, right? Like, 
baths are totally unnecessary. Well, you didn't do that for us, so... <laughs> you didn't ask! If I'd known you guys were going straight to bath time, I'd just stab my fingers and we'd be well, done with it. Well, you left to go talk to whatever doofus name is in the place, <laughs> so... We left, and we're like, we'll meet you later, so... Doofus Whatever face. Doofus Face's name. Is. Whatever Doofus Face is. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember his name. I've never met. I have never talked it's, to the guy. Anuli. Cannoli. <laughs> Anuli Igapon. Cannoli? No. Holy cannoli? No. Yeah. no. It's a cannoli. That's a food, not an elf. Mmm, <laughs> yummy cannoli. He's also a challenger of the 12 arc ma uh, mage, you so know. that would be nice to him. Oh, he is? Wow. <laughs> Do I need anything done by him? <laughs> I already got all my equipment identified by the owner of that shop, so I think it's... You get anything enchanted? Uh, the owner of the shop actually has is a higher level, so... Mm -hmm. He's my favorite shop owner, because he broke the curse on us. That was very nice. <laughs> there was no curse on us! We had... <laughs> Extra cool power. I broke the curse. I, I'm the one who smacked it. I smacked the imp. You're welcome. With my giant hammer. The boy are cool powers. I, I'm not saying it was a curse, but I, I am going to mention that something bad would have happened had it stayed on y'all a couple more days. Anyways, okay, so. Uh. Kitesh is up uh, cleaning his armor um, and making sure it's all good. Uh, Audric, names are going out the window for some reason. Audric is taking his bath and it's a nice uh, scented water. Uh, it's got a Darnassian scent, so very floral. It smells good. Uh, to, it's also heated, uh, so you don't have to worry about shivering your fur off or anything. And, That's nice. And that brings us on over to Oriana. What are you doing? Heading back to the inn and then... I'm pretty sure I have a date tonight, don't I? Yes, you do. Yeah, I guess I'm doing that then. <laughs> okay. Gonna go ahead and speed through. Although, things. Go ahead. I am not gonna go back to the end and take a bath because I don't need to do that. Okay. I'm just gonna clean up. I'm pretty sure I already cleaned up. You anyway. did already. You did. You did right before. I clean up right again. Up the anti -magic video. I clean up again for fun. <laughs> Maybe add some perfume this time. Dig out some of my like fancier robes. Because all I wear is robes, and and that's because that's all I can pack. And then I guess I'll go meet Emily. Where okay. I forget where where was we? Where did I meet? Uh, he was going to meet you at the end. Yeah, he was going to meet you at your end, at the Moonlit Inn or Mo Moonlit View. Yeah. I'll get the name of that inn eventually. I promise. Maybe. No, nobody wants to see the ad about whatever it is. What if I need it? If you need Grammarly, you, you're in trouble. <laughs> Misa in big Gram you fail I, I English? Use. That's impossible. I know, right? Um, um, I use Grammarly. It's actually really useful. Yeah. It, it is. Um, I usually notice most of my spelling mistakes because I'm OCD about some things. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm not saying I need an intervention on my OCD, but sometimes I do. <laughs> not today, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, in that case, as the uh, the afternoon uh, goes ahead and uh, settles and wanes, uh, <coughs> dusk starts coming up. Um, anybody going to do anything before we get to the date? Um, I was going to go find someone to talk to Lady oh, Quest yes. or talk to her myself, but she's probably busy, so if she could just drop the form off, like in the badge and stuff, to my room, and I'll just tell her, like, I, I accept the things, and then she can... I'll find a dude who works for her to relay the message. 
because she's probably got bigger things to deal with at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, uh, you find a guard uh, nearby near the uh, Stormwind uh, Embassy, and uh, let them uh, let him know uh, what you're wanting to do. Can go ahead and send a positive message and all that on over and everything else. <coughs> uh, he looks back at you and says, Alright, I'll make sure she gets this. Don't worry. Thanks. And, uh, after watching you leave at your particular height, he's kind of like, Really? Lady Prester wanted him? What in the world is he? Did I, did I hear him say that? If you want, you can. I'm going to roll a perception check see if I heard him say that. Okay, you may roll perception. It's not a high difficulty, so... Okay, that'll pass. Even at a minus... Oh, yeah, you would only have had to roll over a five, so you're fine. Like... Yeah, you have a good night too, buddy. <laughs> Wake at him. <laughs> like, yeah, Lady Prester wanted me. It's like, when you want you. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. That's what you get. You get the feeling that he's got a little bit of jealousy going on. Like, why didn't she ask me? I mean, I'm the, one of the royal guards. I, I protect... I protect the the Rins and Lady Prestor when they're out of town. Why not me? That kind of stuff. All right, Audric, you want to do anything, or do you want to laze around in the bath? Uh, I kind of want to go looking for Katesh, but I don't know. Maybe I'll just. Okay. I guess we'll go try to find his inn and see if he is there. Okay. Uh, I will say that, yeah, y'all would, uh, would be able to meet up. Uh, would be fairly easy. Um, you find the in it's easy to find the last drop. Uh, every dwarf in the, se in the entire city knows where it is. Probably because they have a tab, a running tab there. <coughs> and uh, as you walk in, uh, Katesh isn't there quite yet, but uh, it seems that the people there know him. Uh, the innkeeper does, and let you know that yeah, he'll be by in a little bit. Uh, again, a, a dwarf in the corner is talking to him. Uh, it seems to be a younger dwarf, at least one less adventured, and seems to be regaling him with stories of um, uh, awesome heroics and various other things that are not related to this Friday thingy on the ad. Nobody <laughs> wants COD. Nobody wants Call of Duty. I'm sorry. The twelve-year-old on their parents' Xbox wanted. I don't even have an Xbox. <laughs> I'm gonna wait outside the inn and just watch the people walking by the street. I guess. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the people walking by seem to be uh, mostly dwarven. Uh, some are. Uh, most of them seem to be mothers picking kids up from. Uh, school uh, whether that be mining or smithing or some other job uh, seem to be escorting them back to home get them cleaned up other things after a little while Katesh saunters up the way he does Katesh, as you walk up to the last drop, uh, you see Audric leaning up against the wall, kind of <laughs> waiting on you. Like a dad waiting for his son to come home after he's saying he's overstayed his curfew. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh -huh. <laughs> sleepy. Hey, Audric. How's it going? Hello, and I punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. Oh. Um, um, 
that's okay. Yeah. You're gonna break you your make fist. Make an attack roll at, at advantage. I mean, if you're wearing a helmet, I guess if you want me to smack you over the helmet with my club, I could do that, but I'm just gonna punch it. it it's a surprise attack, so make a uh, make it at advantage. This would be an unarmed strike, which... No! Why, Dice? Why? Okay. A three and a five! So, that brings your total up to... Not much. You have to roll 20 to hit me, so... I got a six. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I should use Shalali. <laughs> well, Shalali. Oh, wow. It's a Shalali. It's a Shalali. Well, Audric, as you uh, say hello, Katesh, and you wind up and swing, um, you forgot he's a gnome, <laughs> and you didn't compensate. Uh, your human form is not—it's not the same height as your uh, wolven form, and um, as such. Miss his head and Katesh, you <laughs> don't even feel the breeze. You just see his uh, part of his arm just kind of fl fly over your head. He just completely misses you. And about that look on your face is about what I was expecting. <laughs> well, if he doesn't react, I'm going to pretend like I swung over his head as a distraction and I'm going to try and knee him in the face instead. <laughs> At this point, I have pulled up my shield, so like you're gonna oh. get your kneecap into my shield, and or I'll swing my hammer at your knee, and then you won't have a knee anymore. <laughs> I'm just imagining the Tom and Jerry sound effects that are happening right now. Swish, cutting, ah! Yeah, pretty much. He's okay. More like Wiley Coyote. He's gonna descend. He's just gonna blow up at some point. If you're actually going to knee him in the face, you need to roll an entire. Well, if he pulled up his sword, then I, I mean his shield, then I won't. Okay. Yeah, he would have been able to pull up his shield in this in this amount of time. I like his face though. There you go. Just like. Uh, are you possessed? Like, did I miss something with like the crystal? You almost got my innkeeper. <laughs> I'm being assaulted! <laughs> what can I do for you, Wadi? You hear from I was just trying to make a point, but I guess I'll have to make it in another way, some other time. Let's go inside and have some dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Oh, a point. Which what I was going to say doesn't really work terrible. unless I actually successfully hit you, so... <laughs> Oops. Oh, so you're going to make another point another time, so... That... <coughs> Ooh. Ooh, make a point by uh, missing me completely. I... Super scared. I'm confused. Also, I'm going to bed. Have fun. <laughs> you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do. You can do it somewhere else. I got no time for you. I'll talk to Oriana later. Maybe she can explain what nonsense is going through your head because you never share any secrets. At least she talks. You just throw punches and growl <laughs> and try and get us all killed under the sewers so I got no time for you do you want me to attack you again Mr. Dirt <laughs> uh, PvP PvP fight 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 yeah I know I'm just walking upstairs he's gone I'm going to bed uh, okay. I really want to try to trip him with Thorn Whip, but I guess I will always train myself. If you want to get smashed in the head with a hammer, you could do that. Uh, as you follow him in to plot, possibly tripping him up, you notice that the inn uh, at this time now uh, is full is in full dinner rush. Uh, the innkeeper has about twenty ish dwarves, uh, each one with various implements of war still attached to their side or sitting next to their table. And there's, of course, the waitresses and who are busily going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, a couple of them are punching the patrons because the patrons decided to do things untoward towards the waitresses and therefore receive justice from it. So... 
probably not the best place to start a, bra uh, a bar fight. It, at the same time, it might be, but you might be the receiving end of Dude, several of them. Yeah. You might be the receiving end of several uh, several attacks. Let's put it that way. And okay, well, I guess I'll head back to my inn. <laughs> okay. Okay, as you head back, and uh, Katesh goes upstairs. Nobody cares about the stupid ad. I don't care about the ad. Okay. Well, as you get back to your, uh, to your inn, uh, you going to do anything special or just go to bed? I'm just going to go to bed. Okay. Screen transition. As this loads up, Oriana, uh, as you're waiting, you see Audric walk by you, and also, um, uh... Oh, wait, no, I forgot! Wait, 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 no, I forgot. While I was there, I was going to tell the innkeeper at that in about how Katesh, the great dragon slayer guy, was totally wanting to run away from a fight with... Come on. That's fine, I already told them how, uh, how you... Um, You'll have to make a... a this would have to be a persuasion roll since you're trying to tell the truth. Okay. But as you're doing that, uh, Oriana Anuli uh, enters in the uh, the tavern slightly after uh, Audric. Uh, seven plus. Better be a lot. Plus zero. Also, I'm going to tell the story to my innkeeper as well. <laughs> They both like me better than you. I don't know what you're attempting right now. <laughs> okay. You'll have to roll a, a, a new persuasion check on Constance. Uh, the difficulty is not as much. What am I trying to persuade her? I'm just telling her a true uh, event. Whether or not she believes you I'm or Katesh. I'm not Kitesh. trying to get her to do anything with it. Uh, I'm just trying to tell her something. Yeah, but it's I'm not. just like, hey, two plus two equals four. Okay, Where bye. we ran away and I made us live. That one. That, that, that point. Okay, if you don't want to pr try to persuade her, then that's fine, too. <laughs> Either way, Anuli walks into the in the inn and uh, looks over at you, Oriana, and smiles. Uh, he's wearing um, he's wearing his hair back uh, a little bit. Uh, he's also wearing a, a dark, rich silk uh, silk. You think? Uh, suit, uh, dark uh, dark pants, uh, a white shirt, uh, very nice jacket. Uh, looks really spiffy. You said that Audric walks, Audric walks past me? Yeah. Okay. So, I when Audric walks, walks past me, I wave at him. Audric! Hello. <laughs> Where are you headed? Go to bed. Well, uh, you haven't really formally met Anuli. Uh, um, as he comes up by. Anuli, this is my friend Audric. He's the one I've been traveling with for a couple of years now. Oh, so this is the one. All right. Hello. I am Anuli Igapon. And he extends his, extends his hand out. I am Audric Thane. Anuli is kind of, sort of, we're sort of still kind of dating. It's a little, it's kind, it's kind of complicated, but that's, yeah, that's the help, that's our, the, anyway, Ben, where were you, where were you? Oh, I was just saying hi to Katesh over at his inn. Oh, how's he? Seems to be doing fine. I feel like he needs a deception check. I vote deception check. Why? If, Oriana, Oriana always believes what what Audric says. He's her Oriana, friend. He's her best friend. That's the thing is, if Oriana wants to incite him, he she can. No, I believe it would, him. It would of then course he wants to go, check go him against that. whatever role. And it's true, so it's not even deception. That's what I did. <laughs> that's not what I did. 
I am playing Oriana. Thank lie. you very, thank you very much. But I think I can play my character just fine without your help. <laughs> Oriana is allowed to make her <coughs> decisions. <laughs> Uh, you will have to make a deception roll, though. Ooh. What is a newly stuff? Because I rolled it. Uh oh. Bye. Okay, a newly, where did I put your stats? I have them somewhere. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, because I have them there, I don't... Okay. Da, 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 da. <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty certain. Uh, just a five? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he gives you a sidelong look. How was Kadesh? Is he recovered from our, from our battle? I think so. He didn't smell terrible. Uh, okay, uh, where would he smell terrible? Because we were in the sewers? You were in the sewers? Uh, but, yeah, we had to go there, that's where the, uh, the cult went. Oh, did I not? I. But I could have swore that I helped you out. I thought... Next time you should just tell me if... if for, then I can just clean I thought we had a whole conversation about me going to take a bath. Didn't we have talk about that? Yeah. But that was like a whole um, two hours ago. I've forgotten by now. <laughs> you know that I don't keep unimportant details in my head very long. Mm. Did you learn anything else about the portal, Anuli? Oh, uh, yes. I managed to uh, pinpoint it transported to somewhere in uh, Gilneas, and um, it seems to have had a lock on it. Uh, only those of uh, certain diseased uh, affliction could, could use the uh, teleportation circles. Teleportation circles that only the undead could use, so that is a trick. Yes, it is. It appears to possibly be uh, related to whatever... Your sister, you said? Yes. It appears to be related to whatever power she has right now. As opposed to any she may have had before. I'm not certain what she had, but they're definitely. As far as I know, she didn't have any powers before. She was the most normal of our whole family. Curious. That's, that's actually saying something. Very much so. Well, n I, I. No offense meant, but. Uh, uh, these oh, it's powers. fine. He was raised by wolves. He has, he's pretty no he's very used to everything being weird. Um. Uh, by point of wolves. point of intercession. Wouldn't that mean it? The it that's not really saying something if they're all super weird. That'd be like <laughs> they're all super normal. You're not there. She's the least they're weird right. out of all of them. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, in, is this my character's voice? No, I was making a comment. Make comments in the comment section, sir. <laughs> that's where it's for. That that is. Rather curious. I've not met someone who's been raised by wolves yet. This is definitely a first. It makes it much more interesting to bring these but to dinner parties because I can introduce him as my best friend who was raised by wolves. It's hilarious to see their reactions. <laughs> I can understand why, <laughs> particularly for you, Ori. Uh, okay, that must be quite, quite entertaining. <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy it. So is there a plan to send a force through the portal to Gilneas to see what happened? Uh, yes, uh, I believe Jenna, uh, Jenna Menethil was uh, going to be uh, putting together a 
group of mages, group of uh, paladins to transport over there and secure a uh, foothold. Uh, I believe they were supposed to head out tomorrow after they assembled everyone. And right now we're just assuming that all of Gilneas is under the control of a scourge. We're assuming right now that at minimum um, Gen's son, the younger Greymane, was uh, killed in battle. And we're assuming with that uh, that much at least. Uh, we're not assuming Gilneas has fallen or anything yet. Uh, but we have griffins and mages and teleportation. Can't we send a scout to come, go and come back quickly? Uh, the scout would take quite a while. Uh, but we can use the uh, the teleportation. That's why we are gathering them together for tomorrow. We're preparing for, I believe, uh, Miss Menethil wanted to prepare for any outcome and make sure that uh, no matter what, we could establish a foothold. At least of some relative strength. Are you going to be going? Uh, no, I am not. I have other activities to deal with here. Um, the formula for the portal wasn't that hard to work on. It took me tw 20 minutes at, mo at most. So they they have they have what uh, what they need of me. And to be fair, I'm not much for combat. Hmm. Well, you must be a highly skilled mage. I have some talent in it. Yes. He's being modest. He has quite a bit of talent. He actually teaches the children in, Dal in Dalaran. Uh, novices, but yes. <laughs> I, I make sure the novices don't burn the hairs off of the, uh, off their own forearms and blow each other up. Yeah, that's a real problem. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you. Are you headed somewhere now? Of course, we are heading to the. Uh, where did I put that name? Where did I put that name? I put that name somewhere. Where did I put that name? Uh, we're we're heading to the Mesa's Pond. It's uh, one of the best seafood places here in New Lordaeron, or so I've been told. I always wanted to check it out. And I have had seafood in like forever. The. Uh, Chef Since Robin. you refuse to catch me fish with the with the wolf teeth of yours, I think I still think it would be kind of fun to see you try and go fish in a pond as a wolf for, for dinner. I would almost recommend a bear, but okay. No, 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 no. His dire wolf farm is much more fun to watch do things. It's huge. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, I can see that. But he doesn't like. Showing off, he's like, I can only do that a couple of times a day, so we should probably save it for combat. And I'm like, but it would be way more fun to catch fish this way. But why catch fish when you have good berries? I want to eat berries all the time. Meat is great. That's true. Good berries have their place. But uh, since we are here in New Lordron, I figured I'd. You know what we could do? Well when you catch the fish, we could make the good berries into a glaze over it. That mm. would be quite interesting. That sounds like a waste of a spell. Slot. <laughs> but you cast it as a ritual, so. Oh, that's I right. See. We don't do that anymore because that's not a thing. be interesting. And Goodberry Clays. I wish Goodberry was a ritual spell. That would be convenient. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, it would be worth it. We could do it right before bed, and you just get your spells back anyway. Mm. There it is, that. That would, that would definitely be a benefit. Hmm. We'll have a nice dinner. We will also 
trying to get some sleep and no more strange dreams. The last couple of times you've fallen asleep, you've gone to my room like, Ah, I dreamt of thinking this was weird and I'm getting tired of it. Okay, could you like try to actually sleep all the way tonight? I would recommend I staying away from the, I would say stay away from the good berries, but I don't I'm not sure that you do that anyways. Warm milk. I, warm milk oh is 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 how you stave off dreams. Mm. You should try. I'll have to try that. Mm -hmm. That would be a good that would be a good a, a a good way to take care of the dreams. Nobody cares about that. Go away. Alright, anything else? I newly will extend his elbow or his arm out for you, Oriana. Uh she takes it and she kinda she like kinda does like very um very formal. Then she looks back at Audric and she sticks her tongue out on him and just kinda says, Night <laughs> Okay. As you uh, take a hold of his arm, uh, you can tell the uh, the fabric uh, of his coat is a lot nicer than silk. Mm. Like, if you want to roll for it, you can to figure out what it is, but arcane lore. <laughs> I don't have arcane lore. I'm a sorcerer who doesn't have arcane lore. It's kind of interesting, but okay. <laughs> Uh, five. Okay. That'll get you the bare minimum. Uh, this uh, particular uh, fabric feels uh, very much so like what you've heard described as a uh, shadow weave. Um, seems to be a fabric you kind of vaguely remember that there's a long process involved in it. I just kind of take a piece of it and look at it. Well, this is fancy. Yes, it is. It um, took me quite a while to, uh, to uh, gather all the materials for it. <coughs> What's the occasion? Is it for some kind of formal event? For this one, I had it made for the next time I got to see you. Oh. Well. I guess that really is a very special occasion. I mean, it's not every day you get to see me laughing and making fun of the people around us. Yes, that's... That was part of it, but mostly just wanted to see you, but... Hmm. But yes, no. shall we go? Of course. I heard the chef, Robbie Flay, is uh, cooking up quite the storm tonight. Ariana's eyes twitch a little bit at Robbie Flay. That name sounds a bit familiar and slightly cliche, but I'm sure his food will be great. Except I didn't make the character. He's literally in World of Warcraft. I know. <laughs> and uh, as you guys uh, leave the uh, m moonlit view in the park and you guys stroll through the beach and get to the, watch the sun as it's setting. Uh, walk barefoot if you wish. Uh. Of course. I will walk barefoot. <laughs> Alright. Uh, after a few minutes, uh, just gentle small talk and going back and forth. Uh, make me a perception check. Uh, so 19. 19? Uh, okay. Uh, you notice Anili has a little bit of a cough. Um, seems to... Uh, he also seems to have a little bit of a dry throat as well. Um, doesn't seem to be much more than that. Anili, are you alright? You don't seem to be feeling well. Did you get sick? Did you th I told you not to overextend your stuff with your spells. Are you looks overextending your spells? Was, was that why you figured out all the things? Because you were you were up all night, weren't you? Uh, I did not expend all my spells. It's alright. Uh, I've been 
trying to maintain myself, uh, at least as much as one can here in New Lordaeron, where everybody is doing all their best to try to blow up my laboratory. But uh, it's just a little bit of a little bit of a, uh, of a sore throat. Not nothing much. I don't like that answer. All right. You may make an insight check if you desire. <coughs> I mean, Ori said that to him. Yeah, he he's kind of he tensed up a little bit on that. Okay. Sixteen. Ooh, uh, he's definitely lying. I take my hand, my arm out of out of his, and I walk forward until uh, ahead of him. So I face the sun, and I cross my arms, and I turn my back to him. Oh goodness! What now? Well, if you're just not going to say it honestly to me, then I don't see why we're talking anymore. I might as well just look at this ocean. At least it's going to be honest by the fact that it's water. Oh, good night. All right, I had a little bit of a of a of a bug come through. It's it's nothing to worry about, at least for right now. That's still extremely vague and uh, super annoying. I keep staring at the ocean and across with crossed arms. Are you dying? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Make a persuasion check real quick. You have advantage. Can I really roll an 11 twice? That's weird. Okay. No, I can't have. No, it just shows the numbers up twice now. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sixteen plus my persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, twenty-three. Ooh. Okay. I have a plus seven in my persuasion. That works good, particularly right now. Listen, Ori. I didn't want to worry you. I at least wanted this night to be at least. At least peaceful. Well, it's still peaceful. Between us. Well, you're the one who decided to lie, so you're the only one who's making it not peaceful. You could just clear it up really quickly by telling me you're dying or cursed or whatever it is that seems to be ailing. Because now I'm just all freaked out, and it was like I thought maybe you had a cold, but now it seems like it's way worse. You have cancer, you're I'm dying tomorrow. Who? I'm a saw you? Earlier. She caught me by surprise. It's one of the few times somebody has done so. And? Pre-order now. Nobody wants to pre-order now, please. Fighting with the ads. This makes it really hard right now. Um, and um, she... Uh, well, I guess the only way to tell you is to show you and you see him pull up towards his collar and pulls it down just slightly uh, the veins are a sickly green and they are bulging and showing through they're being stopped by something but it's seems to be you know, holding something back he seems to be infected with something. Well, have you gone to a healer about that yet? If I go to a healer with this one, they will recommend the same thing I've already prescribed. Fire. 
It's the plague. Ori. Amo managed to infect me with the plague. I have some uh, magical reser uh, reserves left for the day, and I've been using them to fight it back. But it won't last the night. And by morning, I would be one of the undead. And in this city, that would mean instant death. You're telling me you're dying, you're gonna be dead tomorrow morning? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone who could cure plague. What am I supposed to what are you supposed to do? Enjoy, enjoy an evening with me. Oh yes, because it's that easy. Oh, I, I enjoy this evening. Also, I'm gonna be dead by morning. You, you've gone. You haven't gone to the healers. You just sort of summarized this on your own. Like this is the only way to handle it. You haven't tried to find like a magical stasis or something that we can find a plague soon or a cure soon. Uh, because I've studied plague. It's been That's one of great. the things I've studied, and, uh, it's not pretty, Ori. I'm not an idiot. I just pretend to be one. I know what you're saying, and I know what's going to happen. But it surprises me that you're just ready to die, roll over and die in this situation. You're not going to try anything. What would you have me do? My I friends? just said, go to the go to the healer. Find some sort of way to magic. We, we can put you in a magical stasis where you would be un, where you would be frozen in time. The stasis is probably the only way that we could do so. Then let's do that. I'm not sure of anyone who could. This. This is the city with Lady Jaina at its head. There are magical sources here. There are. We have gathered the world's leaders in one place. You're right. I shouldn't have given up so easily. When she told me she infected me with plague, though, my plan had been to go out with, of course, with fire to end things on my terms and not let her do anything untowards. What was I going to get? Like, a letter saying, oh, by the way, and Anmu got to me and now I died. But it was really great knowing you. This is a terrible, terrible, terrible way to tell me. Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Because Amu got to me after we met, or after we departed earlier at the at the meeting hall. Did you fight her? Did you try to kill her? Did you do anything to her? I managed to use three level five spells, I believe is what it is. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. The more we talk, the more time we are wasting. Go find Lady Jaina. I gotta go find Audric. I... I need his help. You go and find Lady Jaina, see if we can and tell her what she just told me, and to ask her if there's any solutions. And don't just say, are there any solutions? Actually say, I, with my, my sort of girlfriend, person who's going to kill me herself, wants to know if there's a way to stasis chamber to protect this. Be specific, please. I was going to blow myself up with fire, but for some reason That's you're scarier than the fire. All right. <laughs> just, just. All right, give me. All right, uh, I should be able to get in touch with her in a few moments. Um, 
let us uh, let's walk back to uh, to your friend Audric. Uh, I'll s no, send a no, message. no. Just you go. Go to her first. I don't. I don't want you taking any unnecessary trips. And maybe she knows a way to do it. Then she can just do it right there. Okay. I just. The quicker you can get to help, the better. You go. I'll be along shortly. All right. Be safe, Ori. And he turns and heads towards the uh, mage's district. Ariana puts her shoes back on and she kind of gathers her stuff cl closer and just shakes her head and then she runs to where Audric is sleeping. Okay. Audric, while you were sleeping... Also, I drank some more milk, so... You drink some more milk... <laughs> You wake up into this uh, into a very familiar uh, forest. Oh no! Of course, why not? But uh, bet. I'm out. <laughs> before you, the forest starts giving way to. Nope, wrong one. I'm actually, gonna have to do this. Okay. Gives way to a very large white wolf. Oh, you're not in the map. That's Not in the map. He will keeps be. crashing. Okay. Okay. That's very large. Yes. And, it, and it's animated too. Haha, <laughs> I love that. But yes, this large white wolf, use your imagination on the token. <laughs> but it is a large white wolf coming towards you. Audric, what do you do? I greet it in the language of wolves, whatever that may be. Say, Hello there, brother wolf, or sister wolf, or mother wolf, or whatever. Brother I'm assuming since I'm adept at wolves, I can tell what gender this wolf is. <laughs> it's very important that you can tell the gender of this wolf. Yes, you can tell exactly who this wolf is. It's not hard, especially for you. As you look at this wolf, this is Logash, also known as Goldrin. Oh. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I guess I will... Uh, what does wolf etiquette dictate that I should do in the situation? Because I don't think I've ever <laughs> met him before. What would a wolf do? Probably, uh, like, probably like lower its eyes. parts of its head. And... Okay. Ears go way down, doesn't I make eye yeah. contact. <laughs> okay, so you take up submission. Okay. Uh, you mm. hear Goldrin sniff at each of your sides. Are you brave enough to be a guardian? <laughs> A guardian of what? My friend. Well, any friend of yours is a friend of mine, I guess. So, yes. Prove it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as you contemplate, you see fangs as big as your head on either side of you. As Guldrin puts his head on this side, on the left, and then the right, mm -hmm. smelling you. Wait, does he? Is he have his mouth open, or he's just going on either side of me? Uh, the teeth are bared. And there is a slight snarl to him. Uh, well, if his mouth is open, I would just say I just jump into his mouth because because <laughs> that's how you're brave. I'm like, oh, I don't care about these sharp teeth. I'll just jump right to my dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what? It's like, it sounds 
good to me. Like if he doesn't want me to cower or run away, I guess I'm like, okay, face death head on. I don't know. <laughs> That's the first okay. thing that came to mind. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I love the way your brain works. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me a... This would be an intimidation check. Trying to impress Goldrin with your bravery and no, you can, can you can use persuasion if you want intimidation or persuasion. <laughs> uh, yeah, those both use charisma. Can I impress him with my survival skills or my <laughs> insight <laughs> instead? Survival or insight? Um, you could go for ins uh, for survival on this. Okay. There is a way to do it with survival. 23. Okay. Okay. As you leap into his uh, into his uh, mouth as he bears his fangs, uh, he's taken aback a little bit uh, as you stand your ground between his uh, between his teeth and hold up to the top of uh, the top of his mouth uh, the point end of your shillelagh and uh, take a position of bravery. Complete and utter bravery. <laughs> you hear Goldrin suddenly shocked, and at the same time, he lets out an approving nod <laughs> and then kicks you out of his mouth. So he doesn't even see this nod. Does he just feel the head go up and down? <laughs> yes, he does. He f literally feels the head go woof, and then it goes. Hey. You feel like a, you feel an approving nod. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I literally feel it. <laughs> Interesting choice. All right, I will accept your bravery this time. Keep proving it, and you will stay. So, who am I supposed to be guarding? You said it. I thought you knew. Oh. Okay, great. That's perfect. Sounds excellent. I was just making sure I was getting one message here instead of mixed messages. I could see that. Also, could I ask one tiny favor? If you happen to know what's going on in Gilneas, what's... if? People there are doing okay or not? He pauses for a moment and turns his head to his left, and you can hear him smelling the air before he looks back at you and says, That is not a place of the living. Undeath is there, but there is also small bits of life. What will you do now? I'm planning on wreaking a vengeance so terrible everyone involved will regret the day they were born. Oh, jeez. <laughs> In that case, prove it. And Goldrin steps back into the shadows. And then you're left there with the forest, the sounds seems to be peaceful and then all of a sudden Oriana bursts in the room that sounded like knocking on the door I thought you were bursting into the room no I'm pounding on the door I don't know if you're asleep but it's um, time to wake up now <laughs> okay, I wake up. I am like, whoa, what's going on here? And I check myself for wolf saliva. You hear the knocking. There is no wolf saliva. Okay, that's good. I open the door. Well, I drank some warm milk, but it didn't really work. Shut up! Anuli is... <laughs> Anuli's poisoned. He has the plague. What? 
yeah, he's a moron and didn't tell me. From, he's like, oh, nice date night. Then I'll tell you I'm dying in the morning. That's how he decided to tell me about it. Anyway, I'm freaking out. I need your help. And I'm trying to get him. To, we're trying to figure out how to stop this thing. A freeze in place. But I can't do it without you. You have to come with me now. Okay. Whatever we need to do. How did he get the plague? A move came to him after we left. Apparently, she surprised him, which really... I think Anuli was just being a doofus because it really surprises me that he got being he got surprised. He's usually not that whatever. He screwed up well, and now he came gonna... here into this city. We could be attacked Apparently. at any minute. Did you not hear what I said? Anuli is poison. I don't care about what she's doing or what else has happened. We gotta figure this out. I'm now. just saying it's a really good thing that if she can infect people with plague, that she didn't infect us with the plague. But yes, let's go find the cure or something. Do you think we should go and get Katesh? Is he going to be helpful? I don't know, do you want the entire city to know that Anuli is poisoned Never with the plague and who is running around? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point, sir, let's leave! <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you think that Prophet Velen can cure the plague? I think anything is possible. Newly was basically ready to just roll over and die. He's like, oh, I'm sorry to play, Ori. Oh, it's, it, all it is is a fire, and I die, and that's all I can do. He didn't, like, even search any other options. I well, don't know why. And exactly, that's what I said. I, I, don't, I really don't want my last words to him be, you're a moron and a doofus, so why didn't you figure this out earlier? He said that I'm scarier than the plague, which is absolutely true, because if he doesn't, if it's, it's, because if he dies for stupidity, I will kill him myself. <laughs> That sounds like a good threat. That would keep me from dying. Well, it's, I, it's, I'm implying this too to you now as well. If you die of stupidity, I will kill you first. <laughs> yeah, I think I already assumed that. Yeah, it's that's good. Then, that's, I don't, that's, no, that's not how you're going out. I expect you to go out when you're very old and gray and have several cubs. Anyway, let's go. I'm like, I'm like, just going. Like I'm like I'm like basically running as I'm talking and hoping he's keeping up with me. Yeah, I'll keep up. So where are we running to first? I told him to go find Lady Jaina, so that's where we're going. Oriana, you hear in your head. You go ahead and meet in the uh, chapel, in the center of the city. I was running towards Lady Jaina, but then I hear that, and I, without telling Audric, quickly change my direct trajectory towards the, the temple. <laughs> I just quickly turn and follow. <laughs> As you two uh, get towards this, uh, the uh, the actual cathedral, I'm gonna have to pull up my cathedral. That's fine. Somebody threw a wrench in my plans, which is perfect. I love that. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. I have it labeled. I should have gone there. Okay. Okay, uh, as uh, you two come up to the uh, the Chapel of Light, uh, 
both Jaina Proudmore, Arthas Menethil, and as well as uh, Newly are there waiting for you. I go up to them. Uh, Newly is. Um, he seems to be fighting off as much as he can. Uh, Jaina seems to be almost almost being a mother, uh, trying to see what she can't do, but also study at the same time. And Arthas is a little standoffish, and he's the one who greets you. Greetings. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Anuli has been yeah, a good whatever. friend of him. Okay. Yeah. He's over there. Has anything been done? Can anything be done? Jaina, is there a possibility of being able to put him in a, some kind of stasis until a cure can be found? The best that we can do from what I can tell of the progression is to uh, take him here and then quite literally put him under the immersion of the light. That's all we can do. And that buys us how much time? Uh, it depends. Uh, it could, it could buy him upwards of three months. It could be three days. Uh, that is the most ridiculous answer I've ever heard to any question, and I've asked many questions that have ridiculous answers. Well, it's it has to do more with the nature and the resolve of his will. Will he succumb to the plague, or will he not? Anuli? Yes? You're not going to succumb to the plague. There, he'll last for at least three months. <laughs> <laughs> Arthas chuckles a little bit, but then snaps back into realizing the severity of the situation. He's like, this is not the time for laughs. I must be a strong leader. But that was funny. <laughs> and, um... Uh, and Jenna looks at you and it's like, alright, you are, you are one of his loved ones then, I suppose. Uh, probably a main focal point of his love, so to say. Um... Does it really, does our relationship need to be dissected and figured out at this moment? I feel like he just needs to be cured. I don't really want to talk about anything that other that doesn't involve Then shut him. up and come this way. And Jana takes you and then newly <laughs> towards the altar uh, inside the uh, inside the temple. Uh, Velen is inside and is, seems to be doing some evening prayers. And then looks up. Oh, what? What is... What seems to be the problem, my children? I know he's got the plague. He needs to be cured, but we can't cure him quite yet because we don't have the cure of the plague. So he just needs to be in the mercy of the line so we can buy three months to figure this out. There. Now do the things. <laughs> okay. His mind shudders for a second as he's processing the info dump that you just shoved in his face. And, all right, let's get him over here then. And... Uh, everybody uh, basically heads towards the center of the altar where the main pillar of light is uh, emanating from. And let's see here. You. I want you. And who wants you? You're not supposed to be standing on anything. There should not be anything to stand on. And Velen. And Ori. And everybody else can move up as they so choose. Basically, Audric. <laughs> and they start uh, saying a quick prayer over him and trying to pour in as much light energy and Jaina as much arcane energy as she can. Um, And uh, as they uh, continue on, uh, you see Anuli's form not necessarily um, strengthened, but you can tell that he's not suffering as much as what he was. Like the like whatever was afflicting him, the plague uh, has um, lessened its effect on him.
and as they continue on with this particular ritual, um, Ori, I need you to make three checks. Arcane, Survival, and Charisma. Audric, if you wish to help and give her advantage on any of the rolls, you can. But you can only do... Uh, yeah, you can do two out of three. Can I roll... Uh, well, I trained in Arcana and Survival, so I would like to help in those, I guess. I would like to roll Religion as the, as the ritual takes place for a final advantage. Uh, Ori gets down on her knees and she just she opens her hands up and she just starts praying to a loon out loud. Uh, okay. Um, that's a divine intervention. Uh, go ahead and roll. Roll a percentile die. Your target number is 20. So under 20. Well, that's an 80, so... Yeah, 81. Okay. Uh, okay. So as you, you... You start praying, and... Uh, for some reason, Alun doesn't seem to be quite as receptive tonight. You're not sure why, but it could be your fl uh, your frustration and flusteredness uh, doesn't seem like she's listening, or either that, or she's unable to come help. So it is. Well, I won't forget that. Or you will not forget this. Okay. Well, I mean, well, what's seeing the how distressed Oriana is, warrior, I might as well yeah. just be like, "Hey, Goldrin, this guy looks like a good fighter. He's probably good at being part of a pack of attacking things. So, do you want to help Oriana out and heal this guy?" <laughs> okay, so you're going to try. Uh, your target number will be a ten. If you're going to try to do a divine intervention, you're going to have to beat a ten. Percentile dies. My eraser just broke on my pencil. <laughs> just roll two tens and then you're good. A zero. No, only fifty. You get the uh -oh. feeling you. That did my connection just bomb out? This second dice is just sitting in like in the air, shaking and not <laughs> flipping and yeah, telling the result. It probably has gone flippy. Did not. It, it's also still just hanging in the air, not rolling. For me. It's yeah. That's not just you. Oh no, it's it's laying on the ground. Oh, why is Kylar's table? Oh, because this is oh, okay. Sorry, I was not planning to be here tonight. Did not. Yeah, nope. I don't want a D8. Which one of? Yeah, that 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 that, that dice roller just got glitched. Use a different one. Oh no, I spammed it. Yeah, it says oh, because it says bullet still in progress over there. I wonder if I delete the. Well, if why is oh, there I fixed that. I think red. I dropped it. Isn't that an eight-sided dice? That is a ten-side. I thought the ten-sided was green. That's what I just. I fixed your. I fixed your dice. I picked it up and dropped it. Okay. Yeah, the red ones are eight. Yeah. Okay. So that means they rolled d8s. Is that what you're supposed to roll for percentile? I rolled a d10. Uh, no, percentile is d10s. So oh. you should re-roll. Hopefully, she can get a one. <laughs> Okay. I won't. Nope, 
Seventy. 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 Seventy
Actually, the reason to go there is because Ysera is there. You must pick. You must uh, gain a uh, seed of life from her. You have three months for this. At most, that's that is as long as the uh, trance will last, as long as his body will be able to take it. At the end of three months, the plague will not take him. At the end of three months, his body will burn away. So please, if you value his life, do return quickly. Is he unconscious? He is. Uh, it, you're not sure if he's conscious or not, but he is definitely okay, livid. Is he laying down on something? No. Or? He's sitting in a a, a posi in a uh, meditative position, almost hands in his lap, kind of thing. Uh, his feet are uh, crossed, and he just, with the amount of arc arcane energy that was just poured into him, he's kind of floating. Looks rather peaceful, particularly in his nice shadow a uh, shadow weave suit. But when uh, I I uh, as he's concentrating focus, I come up to him and I cup his face in my hands and I I kiss his forehead and I whisper to him, "I will be back. I will return. You will not fall. Just hold on a little longer." There is a small crease of a smile on his face. I look at Audric, and I just nod at him to follow, and I look at Valen and I say, Keep him alive. I will do that, my child. I will, I have, I will have him under watch 24-7. And as you leave... Uh, Arthas helps Jaina out, and everybody leaves from the chapel, except for Anuli. And that's actually really cool. So anyone who goes to the chapel for the next three months is like, oh yeah, there's just like a random maid <laughs> there, and I'm trans. <laughs> um, they the moved him off life. to the side. They oh, can okay. move him. He he does. There is movement to him. So it's not like he's pinned there. It, it's uh, <laughs> light-induced uh, trance. So uh, they put him there for the power to be focused a little bit stronger. Alright, Katesh, what are you doing this entire time? Just uh, sawing logs? Having a nice peaceful yep. rest? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm a, uh, Oriana, uh, where are you guys heading back? You heading back to the end to rest? or? Yeah, I'm going, into, going back with Audric back to his room. Okay. And when we get we get up to his room, I'm like, I go, this is going to sound a little weird, but do you mind if I stay in your room with you tonight? I don't really want to be alone. Sure. I'll sleep on the floor, and I'll like get like my stuff. I, I do go back to my room, though, because I ain't sleeping on an uncomfy floor. And I drag all the blankets and stuff and everything that I was sleeping on, <laughs> and I put it in his room. Make a little, like little bedding area on the floor. Okay. All right. And as I, you, uh, I, I, I fall asleep, but I, but as I sleep throughout the night, I, you hear me toss and turn. Yes, throughout the entire night you toss and you turn. It's just 
complete and utter sleeplessness, basically. Uh, why didn't the loon answer? What's going on? Just a bunch of questions to answers you don't have right now. And uh, as you look out, you start to have a dream where you're standing on the shore of the beach and the sky is just raining. It's soaking you, but it's just raining. You're just dealing with it, just letting the rain hit you, letting it hit you. You keep looking out over the waves. I know what this is, child. Do you need more help? <laughs> and that seems to be the entire dream. A voice seemingly from the darkness just offering do you need more help? A thought crosses through my head to pray to a loon for protection and I almost do it but then I stop and instead I curl my fingers together in anger. And I just stare at the water, but I say nothing to the voice. Uh, as you do, uh, you notice some of the clouds, even though it's raining, some of the clouds do part just a little bit, and the moon is not silver. It is black as void. I don't look at it. I stare at the water. I purposely avoid staring at it. Okay. You can see the reflection in the water, though. It just... It looks off. Occasionally, you look down and see your own reflection in the water. Your eyes are the same color. Morning greets all of you. Katesh, you seem to have, have had the best rest ever oh my word it feels so good you smell breakfast wafting in from the kitchen below it smells like a really good breakfast this morning for some reason cool I'm not serious your armor looks shiny as you pass by it you can see your reflection in it Yeah, I walked out. Hey, Marky, what's up? How's it going? Oh, it's going all right, lad. I, it looks like you slept well. How'd that armor turn out? Oh, it worked out fine. Yeah, it's good as new. All right. Well, not as good as new. Because, as you know, it's a little bit old. But, you know. <coughs> yeah. Good I as know. it was yesterday morning. Oh, I know. Completely understand. I just saw you miss any exciting bar fights tonight. Oh no. No bar fights last night. Just stupid stories about a chuck shot. Okay. So I didn't miss anything interesting then? Not really. Other than the ammunition used for that stupid... Yeah, it's a weird story. Apparently this one dwarf was uh, trying to invent a new shot. You know, how hunters are. He's trying to make, you know, the best thing ever. And he started using woodchucks. Like, actual, the little squirrel thingies. As ammunition. Uh, I don't... I don't know what he was on. I swear, my stuff is not... I don't want the built anything more complicated than a sword. I know. No offense. But, like, come on. Well, That's ridiculous. This particular lad, yeah, his best he just sticks with the sword anyways. Or a mace, or a mace, or an axe, something. 
Yeah, you you must have something to just, just smash it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's complicate it that way. Well, oh, for sure. Breakfast smells amazing this morning. Oh, yeah. We had a, a nice uh, delivery in from the uh, the farms outside. And it uh, seems to be pretty good. Uh, Helga over there also added some of her uh, some of some of her special seasoning that she managed to find in the market yesterday. It did pretty good. I saw a little bit of paprika, some salt and pepper, and a few other things like that. Well, I should probably figure out about the other two people I'm with are up to. Alright. Probably trying to stay more trapped and getting us murdered. Uh, goodness gracious. Oh, that sounds about right. Alright, lad. You have a good day. Here, have a little bit of orange juice for yeah, the road. Good. And he hands you a, uh, a, uh, a skin. It's small, but it, it's still a yeah, thanks. liquid skin. Or yeah, water thanks. Alright. Take care of yourself. You too, lad. You too. I just want to go looking for people, I guess. Alright. As you step outside the inn, there's the guard you met the other day. Or you met you met the day before. He sees you and straightens up into a salute. So, Dragonfell, this is for you. And he holds uh, out thank a, you. Uh, a, he holds out a canister that seems to hold something in it. It's a round canister, about yeah, big, about twelve inches wide. Oh, <coughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a, I'll have a good day. You too, as well. And as you walk off to go find more people, he, you can hear the creaking in the armor as he watches you go by, and is like, I still can't believe it. And clank, clank, clank as he walks off. Oh, uh, well, actually, I'm gonna go. But I'm gonna go open it in my room. Okay. You dash back inside the the end. You open it up. It pops open, and there before you is that scroll. Is that that contract? Do 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 do. Saved objects, please. Yeah. It's that thingy. <laughs> It bears the the storm uh, stormwind crest on it uh, on the bottom, so you can open it up, show it to people, and say "ha ha," and it just sits there. And it seems that she's also provided a handy case to carry it in to keep it dry and safe, everything else. Excellent. Well, I'll just I'll just roll it back up, put it back in, put it in my pack. All right. And I'll head out. All right. You head out and head towards, I'm guessing, the moonlit view. Try to find everybody else. Yeah, I guess. Okay. You go by. Uh, town seems to have a nice liveliness to it today. Seems to be going pretty well. There's uh, some raves about uh, some of the uh, meals from uh, the Mesa Pond. Some of the, apparently some uh, some of the meals were really good last night, like spot on delicacy once in a lifetime kind of thing. Uh, apparently Robbie Flay had used some of his best stuff, and it was like awesome to everybody, or at least those who the fancy fancy dandy people who probably wouldn't give you the time of day unless they wanted to hire you. Uh, we're talking about. And, you make your way over there into the park and then on into uh, the moonlit view where Oriana, Audric, are y'all staying in your rooms or getting up to do anything? I get up before Audric and I don't say anything. I just get up and I sit, get on my knees and I just kind of stare at the, at the sky. And I just, yeah, that's all I'm doing. Okay. As you stare out at the sky, it is raining in the park. 
which is kind of weird, Katesh. You didn't realize it could rain in just the park, but it's raining in just the park for right now. I have questions with who controls the weather. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I wake up, I'm going to ask Oriana. So, do you think our plan should obviously be to head to the Moonglade? It has to be the first thing we do. We have limited time. But we can't tell Katesh, as you pointed out, he will tell everybody immediately. We have to at least wait to tell him until we're outside the city. So what are we going to tell him instead? Same thing we told him last night. We have to go to the Moonglades. You have to go to a ritual. It's just more pressing now. More urgent we get there. What's the fastest way for us to get there? Do they have portals that can take us there? The night elves. From what I remember, from what my father told me, there are druids have ways that they can get to the, get to the Moonglade quite easily. What we need to do is find a group of druids. Night elves usually are the easiest way to find them. She didn't answer. Maybe it was beyond her ability. If that's true, then I don't want to be her champion. Saving one man is beyond the ability of a goddess, then she's not very powerful, is she? Well, maybe there's another one of the gods working against her. So she couldn't. She could have said so. She didn't answer. She just sends this rain. If it is in, if it is her. Like, that's supposed to be some sort of sign. I dreamed. Just a coincidence? It was rain in my dream. It was another voice telling me he could offer help. Another I voice? Mm -hmm. I had to guess if it would have been the same one that I was concerned about earlier. Well, I don't think we want any help that he could offer. No. I'm starting to question whether we want any help a loon offers either. It doesn't matter. As far as anyone else is concerned, I'm still a priestess of a loon. I still use what that affords me. As far as she and I are concerned, she has something a lot to prove to me if she's going to put me in this position of <laughs> importance and then not even help me keep the one thing that I care about. Sorry. One of the things, one of the people I care about. Not to imply I would not be just as angry if it was you. That's not... I... I'm a little stressed at the moment, okay? Do you know what I meant? Mm-hmm. I tried to ask Goldrin for help on your behalf, but it didn't seem like he could do anything either. I appreciate that. Apparently jumping into his mouth wasn't enough bravery for him to heal. What's his face? You jumped into Canoli. his mouth? <laughs> yeah, you know how you told me to drink some warm milk to stave off weird dreams? It didn't really work. Oh. And Goldrin appeared to me, and he was like 50 feet tall. And he said that I had to sh prove my bravery, and he was just sitting there growling at me. So I decided to just jump into his mouth. and As you, Of course, I, I would have done the same. Earn his approval. So, it's great, because he wanted me to go to the Moonglade, or at least, I guess, going to the Moonglade would be a good first step, if I'm supposed to be a guardian of Yosera. And Teacher wants me to go there, and we can go there and get a seed of life, too. You know, what would be great is if we could find a reason for content. We should tell him there's treasure there. Maybe, maybe <laughs> then he'll want to go. <laughs> I was about to say, too bad there's no treasure there. It... I seem to recall a story my father told of the great green ruby that lies in the heart of the Moonglade. I can't believe I forgot this legend. <laughs> or maybe 
a seed of life would be a good treasure for him to want. I don't really want to take mine, though. Oh, maybe we could just get two. Well, let's worry about the one. I would rather not promise the things we can't... Well, I guess the ruby I think would still be promising. But it, we would be after a different thing than the one thing I want, so... So... I don't think he's going to oh. believe a giant emerald, because he would just say, Why hasn't somebody gotten it yet? That seems like a stupid idea. Why are you guys trying to trick me to go there? Why don't you guys just tell me the real reason? Otherwise, I'm going to be stupid, because you guys are clearly lying to me, and you guys are morons, and I hate everything that you guys do, and I very much disapprove of how stupid and tricksy you guys are. <laughs> that is an excellent impersonation. Not you really <laughs> studying his face. <laughs> And none of it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we just self owned himself. <laughs> After scheming to lie, he's pretending that, oh, he's gonna be so upset that we're lying to him. The nerve! <laughs> we should tell play. him that the leaders want us to go to the moon glade to recover a seed of life. Because that's true. You can tell them about And then he can write a great story about it and tell all the innkeepers about Katesh Seedbringer Man. Seedbringer. He's not a man, though. He's a gnome. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Seedbringer gnome. I suppose we could say we met with Lady Jaina and Arthas and Valen last night in a rushed sudden meeting that they called. Right. Yeah, then the false red herring will just be us trying to keep a really hush that we met with Lady Jaina, and then he'll freak out about how we're not just nobodies and that we're great celebrities, and that's that's what he'll think the dumb part is. He won't realize the other part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you think we can pull this off, I'd just rather our paladin friend doesn't have any fun stories to tell about a man with the plague who's dying in three months. I feel like he will broadcast that to everyone he meets, as soon as he knows. Especially if he knows where he is, he'll be like, oh, look at the ca go to the cathedral and see the weird man just floating <laughs> in the air. <laughs> Katesh, do you just wait for them down at the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like the barkeeper. It's like the, bar the barkeeper likes me. Okay. So. You and Constance have been having a delightful conversation. Yes, we have. She's been listening to <laughs> you tell your stories and has been remarking how that is incredibly brave and, oh, that's so wondrous and everything else. I use prestidigitation to make myself spruced up, make it not look like I have uh, been crying all night, and then I make sure that my outfit is perfect, and I open Audric's door, and I'm like, shall we? Also, I have no intention of moving these things back into their room. That's for the uh, that that's for the housekeeper, whoever that is. <laughs> oh, oh, um, also, also, um, since so this is. This, 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 their conversation seems like it lasted a while. So I'm down there having a conversation. I feel like I'd ask the barkeeper, like, so, like, have you, did you see them come back? I, I mean, I haven't seen them. Like, are they up there? Because, like, I feel like I should be down here for breakfast or something, right? Is there late they sleepers? Came in, uh, they came in a little late, but uh, I figure if they came in that late, then chances are they probably were out partying or something. Uh, after uh, all, I. No, I very much doubt that they were out partying. Well, yesterday was not exactly a day for partying. Okay. Well, um, there's no telling. Uh, in that case, they seem to have been kind of tired when they came in, but they went straight to their rooms. Like. I don't know if they were, well, how late like, were they up? Maybe, well, are they going to wake up in, like, two hours? Like, trying to go do something? Like, how late, like... Uh, if you want, I can... Do, 
I can poke in and see if they're all right. Sure, why not? They would. Well, Audrey tried to punch me in the face for unknown reasons last time he saw me. So maybe sleeping made him feel better. You have no um, evidence. That blow was like two feet over your head. I was just <laughs> acrobatic dancing move. <laughs> all right, I, I can. I, I'll be right back then. Uh, just give me a moment. And she uh, goes upstairs to the. Uh, to y'all's doors and knocks on Ori's first. Well, by this, uh, by, <laughs> and the dog goes crazy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Where are you? It's okay. Well, the, the knocking door fooled the dog. <laughs> I assume she comes in at the tail end where I say, where I open the door and I say, and I'm not moving them. That's for the innkeeper to do. <laughs> okay. Wait, weren't you in Audric's room? Yeah, but I opened the door before I said that. Okay, so as she starts knocking on you, uh, on the door, she hears you open it and go, and that's for the innkeeper. To, she looks over and just still half-heartedly keeps knocking just a minute, moment and goes, Okay, well, I, I, I this is my inn. I'll I, take care of it. I ignore her and go downstairs. Goodbye. I act as though I didn't hear her. Uh, uh, Audric, sir, there's somebody down yes. there, uh, downstairs to see you. Ah, yes, uh, we are expecting him. Sorry, we've had sort of a rough day, so you'll have to forgive her. But so she just moved some of the blankets and stuff onto the floor of my room, so we need to move those back. I will have them moved e easily later this afternoon. Don't worry. Thank you. Then right, I'll go downstairs. Kitesh, you see them walking downstairs, and it's like, dun, 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 dun. Oriana seems to be in a sour, 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 sour mood. No, no, no. Before I see Kitesh, because I know what's going to happen, I, I'm, I, right before I get to the final step, I perk up, go back to my normal self, and then I hop, hop down the, the stairs, and I go, Kitesh! <laughs> Have you gotten breakfast for us? I got you breakfast last time. I, I expect breakfast to be on the table by now. Well, I wasn't sure when you guys were going to wake up. Apparently you guys had a late night. Oh. Yes. Wait till you hear about it. <laughs> and then that's right when I get to the table and I say, as long as you promise to swear an oath of secrecy. <laughs> you know what? No, I'm just gonna try to explain why you tried to punch me in the face. Like that that would be great because I don't Audric Why did you try to punch him in the face? Did he He's say something mean? You know that he just talks. He's all talk. Yeah, and he thought that he needed to be taught a lesson about proper manners and how one treats one's friends in front of world leaders. Oh, Oh, actually, you know what? In this situation, uh, you have my permission to punch him in the face. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had forgotten and forgiven him, but if you want to give him some revenge for that, I'm okay with it. Well, it didn't go um, so well last time. I put my fingers in Kitesh's face and start snapping. Come on, give me a smile. That was funny. You have to admit, that was funny. Anyway, the secret meeting that we had... Oh, the secret meeting that we had last night was with Lady Jaina and Arthas and Valen. And they told us, they told, they rushed us in all of a sudden. They, they said that they might have a cure for the plague called this Seed of Life. It's on the moon blade and we have to go and get it. But it's time sensitive. They think that they, if we don't get it within the next three months, a lot of people are going to die with the plague. So we're kind of out of time crunch now. And it's perfect, because we already had to go to the Moonglade to rescue Teacher from the Emerald Dream. So that's where we're going to go. Right. So so you, you withhold m m information that could be potentially important at a meeting with, like, all the really important people. And then mm -hmm. uh, you try to punch me in the face. And then you have a secret meeting without me. So clearly okay, they don't to be there. To be there. Well, they don't know that you're um, working with us. I said, I said, 
Well, I did. I did. I said, our friend Katesh is here. And they're like, we don't know this Katesh person. He's like, he was at the meeting, but like, we know you guys. You guys are the heroes that brought sword. Whatever, you know. And they, so they didn't really let us leave. Also, I don't think, I don't think they really wanted to wait for us to go catch you and then come back. They, they just kind of wanted to say they, they, they figured we could tell you. <laughs> So they had this meeting like super late at night, and they've just held it this morning. Oh, they just made. I'm saying that's what I'm telling you. They just made this. Uh, I'm pretty sure you are aware that yesterday was a very hectic day. That it was a very hectic day. So, like, when did they make this discovery, and why are they sending us to go get it? And also, well, why would they send you two to go get it? Um, and well, they said we could bring anyone we wanted to. We don't ask all these questions. We're not crazy no. inquisitors. We just go accomplish the mission. Honestly, and try we're to keep not it on the down low. We the less questions we ask, the less details you'll tell to the entire public. So it's a win-win for everyone. Also, we don't actually need that encouragement. Yeah. Much encouragement to be heroes. People just ask us to be heroes, and we're like, yes. We don't ask questions. Because you ask questions to the bad, the, the villain who's monologuing and truly, clearly trying to like kill us. Yes, because we need to know what the intentions of the idea. evil people are. We don't need to question the intentions of Lady Jaina. Right. Exactly. Right. No. Why would you want to question the intentions of Lady Jaina? She's the greatest mage alive. And the most noblest soul of ever. Honestly, if I could be Lady Jaina, I would be. I seem to recall some history of. of, of you know, great sorcerers and people being like possessed by things, and you know. But not Lady Jaina, okay? Not She's great. pretty cool. Right. Also, we already had to go cool to the Moonglades, so, yeah. so this was sort of like a while we're there. We might as well get this other thing since I'm going there anyway. So we just have to be there and back within three months now. So really, nothing's changed. We just have a timetable. Right. I'm just saying, like, you can come get me. Also, still not getting the meeting in the middle of the night thing. Look, we don't, like I said, like he said. You've never had a meeting in the middle of the night? Not if you weren't going to leave right away. Like, yeah, we're leaving we're today. Meeting, like, we're like, we're leaving yeah, immediately. So have it, like, this morning. What have been fine. Okay, do you want to write a letter of complaint to Lady Jaina? Ah, uh, how dare you schedule meetings <laughs> at the time when I would not want to, even though I wasn't part of the meeting. The real question is, why are you even trying to get me go? Because you guys clearly don't like me, so I'm just gonna... You know, I will take our meat back and then leave without No, no, no! Oh, I'm, you gotta find somebody else who... You, you, been, right, good luck with that. That because is completely... You, you clearly I feel don't like what you're doing. Just, shut up! I feel like that was completely unfair. I, I... Who was the one who came and mended things after you guys fought? And who has been the one who's been nice to you and told you things up front, even when he wanted to be, ooh, suspicious and other than... Me. I have been nothing but kind to you. Yes, I'm a little bit yeah, of a... Yeah, you feel a lot of time in the, in the punch in the face, so... Not feeling it. He's my I'm best friend. Necessarily, I will always fight right with him. back in the as... meeting of world leaders and made her look like a fool when you could have said something a lot more diplomatically. He's a little protective of me. You should just be aware of that. We are, you should, if you don't understand right now that our dynamic is as close as siblings, then you aren't really paying attention. As long as you don't try to do anything that breaks up that bond or put it, pit us together, you're fine. I like you. I think you're fun. I think you have potential to be a part of our little group and make it more fun. But you have to understand there are some boundaries. I don't have many boundaries, but he has some boundaries and he gets upset when they are crossed. So as long as you can understand that and you're cool with it, we're cool with you. And I would look forward to adventuring with you. You seem like a pretty cool paladin. Like you're kind of like the pa like, with a paladin, but you have a sense of humor and you, you're fun, and you don't like want to punch me every time I open my mouth, which seems to be a thing that people want to do, which I don't understand. I'm charming. But anyway, if you want to come with, I would very much appreciate you coming with us. It'll be so, nice. how are we supposed to get this this uh, this thing? Since you apparently didn't ask me, could you at least ask how that's supposed to happen? Like We're getting it from you, Sarah. I thought that was a ritual. Uh, 
Okay, so we need to go back and ask the people how this is nah. going to work. We'll get there and be like, wait, never mind. We don't know how this is supposed to work. We traveled all this way for nothing. Well, okay. actually, my father is a paladin. Uh, my father is a druid. I know a lot of. I grew up around druids. We traveled. My parents took me all over the all over the countryside, doing different things. We just need to find some night elves and get to the Moonglade. Once there, the druids can lead us into what into the the rituals and things needed to summon this uh, life seed and whatever Audric needs to do for his side of things. So why don't they just, if they know there's a cure, why don't they just like? Send there are, there are rules. There are rules. There's rules and etiquette and all these different things. And because I am the only, I am, I am the most bridgeable person of all. See, because the thing is, I like humans. I've spent a lot of time around humanities. I'm a priestess of a loon. I'm also the <coughs> champion. And my father was a druid. So like, I have a lot of things that let me get through red tape, and they don't. So. Also, if you want to just sit here and twiddle your thumbs in the city instead of going off and becoming the famous hero who cured the plague, we'll just you can just stay here and we'll go off and get all the fame and glory and you can just sit here in this inn. So this cures everyone's plague? Like this is like the cure all the plague all the time and they're sending three people to go get it? We don't know. They don't we know. We don't know exactly they... why they need it, but they think this is an ingredient that's going to be necessary for them to try to figure out how to okay. get it. They don't even know why they need it, and you're just no, gonna go get it. Again, why would so you seem to think that the world leaders are all dumber than you are, and that they should explain all of their plans to everyone because they need to hold meetings at the proper time, and they need to tell us exactly how they're going to do all of these things when we're just the messengers and we just go and do what they say. Um, you were at the meeting. I was at the meeting. There weren't that many people at the meeting, so like to say that you're nobody, incorrect. And Everybody else at the meeting was like the ruler of an entire nation. We're just like some random people. Yeah. But you're not the random people. You're the people who found the ash bringer. Okay, we're awesome. You're Therefore, you should do what we say and follow us <laughs> to go to the moon really, place. Because we're going really on an like... epic, awesome quest of super important people that are really cool. If, and that's why we're if going. If we did what you said, we would have all died in the sewer. So, I'm not doing what you say. Also, I think it's fair to point out. Okay, we, we should stay here and definitely not luck. go to the Moon Glade because it, it's really fun to sit here in this inn and do nothing. I, Audric, Audric, Audric. Can we practice oh, I'm, nice I'm, I'm things? Fun nice being right. nice. We're having a fun time. This is fun. I'm okay, nervous. I'm gonna go tell Valisar that we're leaving today. You can deal with this, and we're gonna leave as soon as possible. Okay, that's, you can come that's with us or much, not come with us. Much better. As long as he gives us the mace before he leaves. I will. I, I'll talk to him. Just okay, to I'm gonna go look in the forest or whatever for Valisar. Also, Our I don't really trust the leaders evil. who let like super evil secret organization have like crazy crystal skull dude in the basement of the giant city. Just great work, everybody. I mean, There's a bad. giant crystal evil thing in the basement of the city. I did not know this. As I'm leaving, I use Druidcraft to make the scent of skunk appear right underneath his nose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Katesh, you do smell what appears to be skunk underneath your nose. Yeah, well, there's nothing there, so I'm just going to assume that it was not normal. <laughs> and I'm used to magic, so this does not surprise me. Nope. Well, you don't talk to the, uh, the other innkeepers? Like, I figured it'd be all around town by now. Oh, well, no, they don't usually tell me anything. Um, well, to tell you the truth, since we're innkeepers, we're all kind of in competition with each other, so they don't talk with each other either. <sighs> competition, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, but this is like an important detail. Like, you know, the Twilight Organization is organizing secret summoning ritual things in the sewers. So, yeah, it's great. So you see them on the streets. Like, no, they're bad. The bad Twilight people. people are doing that? Are you, sure. are, you, are you employing the innkeepers as town criers for Twilight Invasion? Yeah, no. Maybe you tell enough of the innkeepers, you get enough people to know, you get people to look out for it. 
maybe find some information. At least keep uh, help the guards. Because apparently the guards didn't catch any of this, and they were just letting these people, like, recruit uh, in the streets. You so. should know by now, if you've traveled as long as I do, guards are morons. They don't do anything. Yeah, so I hope that the drunken dwarves could probably do a better job, so... Uh, probably, honestly. Right, because apparently everyone in the city is incompetent, you know, world's greatest leaders, we just let someone, like, steal the crystal. Like, honestly, not impressed. Uh... You know, yesterday I would have been like, oh, theaters, they're great. But today, today I just, I, maybe I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but today I agree with you. Everyone's stupid, and I don't know why everyone's stupid. People should just do things, investigate things, tell people things when it's important. Otherwise, it, things would be much better if everyone just communicated and was not didn't act like morons. Oh, oh, by the way, I'm also technically a sheriff now, so that's fun. Sheriff of what? Nottingham? <laughs> I read that in a book once. No. Uh, Lady Firestar gave me a mission to look f well if I happen to find any dragon. They're trying to preserve the dragon races, apparently. Uh, they're looking for intact dragon eggs. 10,000 gold apiece, but I also have the, the uh, position of sheriff so I can arrest people and do all that sort of stuff. Official rank. Yes, I have wanted the power to arrest people since I was a small child. This is amazing! People are stupid, and many more... I think if more people spent a night in jail, there would be a lot more nicer people. Yeah, I don't think they would make Audric a nicer person, though. <laughs> He's kind of grumpy. Okay, again, again, remember, raised by wolves, mammals were not really a thing. When wolves get upset, they just fight each other until someone wins. That's kind of his right, thing. Well. He needs to be able to punch a little bit better than he was like two feet above my head. It was pretty hilarious, actually. Just okay. punch the bed. <laughs> I, I would never say this to his face. He's not that great of a fighter outside of his wolf form. Just, he tries, but he's like, I can arm wrestle him. Yeah. I win every time, but I always promise him I won't tell him that. I guess I just broke that promise now. But, uh, yeah. But if we're going on, like, I get this mission secret down low. We don't want it intercepted because it's a courier mission. Everything else, having, a, you know, a bit of a face with people gets you access to places. That's why I share all my stories with people. So they know me, right, Innkeeper? So if they know information, they tell me. Yes. Uh, and then I get in. Mr. Dragonfell is right. quite, has quite the story, and he does bring in some business. It's... Yeah, see. Can be quite so the point of everything is to make friends with people so that people help you. You don't have friends, and they don't know what you're trying to do, and they can't help you. So, most of the time, keeping things a secret doesn't do you any good. You gotta, you know, let people know what's going on so they can help you. That's why I do what I do. And you guys are all, keep and you guys are, you know, keeping things super cagey, and during the meeting, I thought that, you know, been like, hey, maybe did you want to say the thing that you were going to say? Equally, just pointless. I just wanted to get to the point, so I said it. Well, here's the thing. Audric and I have been friends for about three years, and in that time, we've never trusted anyone. It's just been he and I. Most of what we've done has been wandering the wilderness, solving people's problems that apparently they couldn't solve on their own. Oh, me the adventurers around the town there. And they always were like, oh, you know, uh, I lost my family's heirloom ring. Oh, my father will kill me if they find out about it. Please go retrieve it secretly. And then Audric and I are like, how much gold are you going to pay? And he's like, 500 gold. And we're like, fine, I guess. And then we go do the thing and we come back and we're very discreet. That's how we've gotten about is where the discreet adventurers We come, we go, and no one knows any wiser what we were here for. So, and we even things? enabled everyone to just not solve their own problems. Yes, but we got gold out of it. Oh, so you're not actually... You just want the... Okay. I mean, well, I, I, I... I mean, my go-to, I, I, I like to try and inspire people. So, like, I tell oh. stories to inspire people, and then I try and get them to solve their own problems. So when I leave, they can solve their own problems, right? Well, so usually I leave, I... You know, they still don't know the problems, and the heroes are just gone, and they're like, oh, no, the goblins attacked, or whatever. Well, I usually right. give a sermon before I leave. Mostly okay. on manners. <laughs> That sounds super inspiring. Super, <laughs> super inspiring. I really didn't get into the priestess gig to inspire people. I went into it to serve a higher being. Audric also didn't really get into his thing to 
be inspiring to people. He did it out of duty. So, we're not, what I'm trying to say is, he and I are not really very good at the letting people in. That's why he and I have a good rapport and we're basically siblings with each other. Like, we trust each other and, and we know how each other operate and we have fun together. Everybody else is sort of, uh, we just make fun of them, to be honest, and keep everyone not at bay. But I don't, know, I, I don't know if everybody likes me. So. <laughs> well, you clearly don't roleplay your discussions with everyone else the same way you do with us. That's because you're a doofus. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, like, if everyone else is way better than you. <laughs> Hence my strategy of why Katash has no friends. Okay. I, well. But I, I, I will say, just for future references, I know, now that you've explained it, I see why you said what you said in the meeting, but Audric is very protective of me. Anytime someone's ever insulted me or done anything towards me he didn't like, he gets very aggressive very quickly. So, if you're, usually if you're insulting him, he kind of, meh, brushes it off. He doesn't really care. But when it comes to me... Audric doesn't tolerate it very much. Or if you're talking about his family. So, in the future, just think about that. If you're making me look bad, he's going to attempt to punch you in the face again. It'll happen. Well, yeah, and also, for the record, I thought, you know, I told everyone that you guys brought the Ashbringer to, like, because you guys aren't used to the whole hero thing, and you just kind of did your own thing, but you kind of did some pretty great stuff. And yeah. you're in that meeting, potentially have the like to do greater things and when your own history is involved with what's directly going on the odds that they'll send you on those missions which apparently now they are doing you know goes up if you're directly connected like you have a connection and so providing the opportunities to go forward you're keeping things hidden that we're gonna help you stay involved and since you your history was involved it seemed like you wanted to stay involved so I thought it was helping I can see that. From our perspective, however, the more people know about us, the more they can use against us. But you just said you didn't need to question the leaders because they were awesome. So what are they going to use against you? Not I you. you liked them. Not most of them. I just want to I could deal with them not. But most of them, yes. But the other, it's not them. Even in a private meeting like that, there are prying ears. I just don't see what knowing the identity of someone who's potentially behind a lot of it. You know, that was just helpful information for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Except that it's um, deeply tied to the reason to reasons. Um, well, the things that happened with between me and Amu, if they're fully exposed, could cause me problems back home. Okay, so so get that. So you'd rather have some problem, like you'd rather avoid problems back home and potentially let the entire world fall to the play. Okay, I'm not. Yeah. We're not just talking about an uncomfortable conversation. We're talking about me losing a lot of what lets me move through, like the red tape, my stripping me of status of a priestess. It's important to how I survive and live my life. If the entire world is destroyed, you can't really do that, so my well, point is, you and Audric, you and Audric, you have the potential to do great things, but you're 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 constantly thinking about just just you. Just you. I mean I, well, I that's get always that. had. I, I I talk about me a lot, so like that I became a paladin not to be just me. Like I do this to be inspiring to people, like to see like to be the knight in shining armor. But it's a, it's a. But know. your almond doesn't shine. That's pretty shiny. It it reflects. It doesn't glow. Yes, that's the. Uh, cliches. Anyway, who needs them? But point is, we're all gonna be heroes together. We're not doing it for ourselves. I mean. Obviously, we'll probably become famous, so that'd be kind of fun. But we gotta use it in the right way. If you're famous, you gotta be smart about it, because everybody's looking at you all the time. 
I gotta be the confident hero all the time when I'm in these bars. I can't, if, you know, if I'm in the bars and I'm like, oh my goodness, we're all gonna die. Like, that inspires nobody. That inspires fear. That inspires panic. You gotta put on a brave face when people know who you are. They can't do it just for you. I suppose. Makes sense. So are you coming with us or not? <sighs> yeah, so I'm just gotta get over out. Whatever. He didn't think I'm gonna do for something. I like swear that. he's a lot of fun once you get to know. He has yeah, he's very... even a lot of fun. I don't know why he doesn't. He just doesn't like me because of the way I talk. Apparently, I don't know. Yes, maybe you could curve that. Maybe you could talk more like me. He seems to not be annoyed by me. Pranks. He loves pranks, but make sure they're funny pranks. If you do anything that like hurts him or makes him or, or me, he won't like it. But like fun pranks, he enjoys. We pulled an unknown on once. She was terrible. No, I don't think he's gonna like pranks if it comes from me. I think that's just my personal opinion. No, 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 no. See, the prank would be I would pretend to prank you and he'd think it was funny, but then in reality, you and I had planned the prank from the beginning to make, and, and the plot behind the prank was to make him like you more. I, It'd be a see how pulling a prank on me makes him like me more. Well, if you're like, oh man, that's funny, Ori, you're so great, Ori, I, why, Audric, man, if you pranked me the way she did, we'd get along great, then he'd be like, oh man, like, he likes Ori. He doesn't like it when I make fun of him. Actually, what I'd be like is, who are you and what have you done with the cash? You're not there, hush up. You're not there, Audric. And also, I was completely correct, we were all gonna die, so stop using that against me. He is, he's an intelligent paladin, he's not a doofus, we all just die paladin. You shush, you. It's okay. Keep role playing, or I'm gonna end it. <laughs> uh, look, yeah, I'm gonna come with you. You know, can't pass up key. I just Fodrick's down and starts falling for an obvious trap, and then he just, I don't know, does that. I'm just, I'm just trying to help. Okay, I've done this before. You guys are both kind of not as familiar with a lot of it, so like we're just gonna work together. Make There's it, make going it to be some growing pains, obviously, but I feel like if we can figure this out, we can actually be a pretty great team. Well, also, if the plan to... is to keep everything secret all the time, like we can say like we're on a secret mission, or like we're just coming into town, but they at least need to know that I'm a deputy, so then like, they feel as if we need help in a town, then... Oh, I mean, I tell everybody I'm the priestess, yeah. like, everywhere we go. The first thing, I, when people are like, shake my hand, I'm like, oh, my name's Ariana, priestess of a loon, and I have, like, a bazillion things I could do to you if I really wanted to. Also, I am, at, I also kind of imply that I'm at the right hand of the high priestess, even though that's not true. But, you know, no one who's not a night up knows what that means, so. I find it works for me. Yeah, well, uh, well. Audric said they were leave. No, I guess I've got everything I need. So how are, you, how are we getting there, then? I honestly don't remember. It sounds like um, Audric remembers that. So we should probably go find him. So there's nothing else we need to do to actually make sure we can get this thing that we need? How much money do you have? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking we could go shopping if you wanted to. I have rations and things already, so I'm good. No, no, not for, like, food things. Like, do we need potions or armor or something? Look down at my armor. Does it look like I need armor? That doesn't look like I need armor. Does it, is, did I only say armor? I'm pretty sure potions are mentioned. Well, it's too bad you didn't stay for the rest of the conversation then, Kyra. <laughs> Let's go find Audric. We can decide if we're going to go shopping later. Yeah. We need a fun nickname for you. Because you're kind of, sh you're really short compared to the two of us. I feel like Shorty 
is not really appropriate because you're not really a sh you don't you don't really have a sound that says shorty. But I would really like a, a, a nickname that implies your shorter stature. I think it would be funny. We'll work on that. Anyway, I don't care. You don't really care. You can call me whatever you want. Mini knight. We could call you the mini knight. I like this. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a paladin, not a knight, though. So. No one knows the difference between the two of those things. And she, I, and I walk out of the uh, end. <laughs> there is a difference. There is a difference. Echoes through it. Paladins are usually out. way more sticks in the mud, but I'm a fun paladin. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, as you leave, there's a, another paladin there, kind of looks down at his stick, and picks it up with one hand, and the size of the head is bigger than you, Katesh, and he just kind of looks at you as you leave, and he's like, and puts it down, and goes back to his breakfast. A Jernai paladin. Because he knows, because he knows I'm right. <laughs> oh. Those paladins are no fun. Most paladins are no fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't tell what he's thinking because you're not there anymore. Uh, anyways, um, as you two leave... Okay. Yep. <laughs> as you two leave, uh, you find uh, Audric fairly quick because Audric found Valisart relatively quick. Uh, he had been at the Fletcher stocking up. He's sporting about... Or right now at about oh, close to 5,000 arrows... Who is calling me right? Okay. That's a number I don't recognize and it looks foreign. Oh well. It's really weird to get a phone call in the middle of a street. <laughs> You're like, what? Particularly at like 1040 in the night. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Audric, you found Valisar. He's been stocking up. He's got, like I said, about 5,000 arrows. Quite literally 5,000 arrows. I just walk up and I'm going to say, how are you going to carry all the arrows? He opens up a bag and starts putting them in. It appears he has a bag of holding. Ah, nifty. The arrows will keep you safe. Well, there's good news. We're heading out to the Moonglade as soon as possible. Today, if possible. Do you know of a convenient way to get there? Are there any portals that we could take? Not to the Moonglade. We can get closer. Uh, especially if we take one of the portals to Darnassus. The Druids are kind of picky. They don't like anybody portaling in or teleporting into their into their domain, but we can get to Moonglade from Darnassus. Shouldn't be too hard to secure flight. Um, it'll have to be an airship from there, but we can make it. Do you... So there's a portal here in the city somewhere that leads to Darnassus? Yes. It is uh, in in the mage's quarter in uh, <coughs> Jaina's tower I Perfect. came here from there earlier this month well we just have to go get the other two people Katesh did you meet Katesh? he's going to be joining us I believe I saw him but does it mean I remember I'm better at tracking than I am at remembering so uh, somebody's face or name. Yeah, he's a little short gnome. His head is so big, I'm not quite sure how he doesn't fall over. Okay, you've just described 90% of the gnomes I've ever seen. <laughs> okay, then I will head back to the... whatever it's called. Moonlit in. I think that's what Moonlit it's view. Koso, we're moving out. 
and uh, you guys head back. Uh, there is a shadow stalking you. It's Corso, most likely, and uh, he's the only one not present in your particular group. Uh, you guys meet each other outside, right outside uh, of the moonlit view, and uh, that is where we're going to call it. I'm about ready to dive into a particular trip. This could be interesting. All right, thank you guys for joining us uh, on Twitch. I hope you guys have a good night and uh, God bless. And this this video will be up on YouTube uh, shortly. Uh, it should be by the end of the week. All right, you guys have a good night, and God bless. There we go.